Hey guys and welcome back and in today's video I want to talk to you guys about the core components of a good network. Whether you're a home or business user, today I want to talk about a lot of the buzzwords that get thrown around in networking and just break it down to real simplistic stuff. Now what you're looking at right now is the average graphic that I must have drawn now about 50 times in my life, whether it's with companies, whether it's personally with family members trying to explain the difference between network and the internet, or simply a diagram that I've had to draw simply to show people how to integrate better backup and storage solutions in their home or office environment. I debated doing this different ways with graphics on screen, but ultimately I've never had more success than just doing this diagram, talking through exactly how your network is built and how different elements are factored into it. So, today I'm going to talk through the main difference is between all of these components, what you need and what you don't need. Some of these things you may already know. For example, you must know about the internet. The fact that you're watching this video means you are well aware of the internet. But after that, a lot of these ambiguous terms end up being used and interchanged with one another and some of them have fallen out of favour. Others are quite modern, whereas others often get mixed up between. And today I want to talk about the difference between them and how they all connect. At the bottom here, I've made a list of a lot of common components that are found in home and business environments. And although your house or office might not look like this, what we're talking about is all of these devices that live here, your home or office environment. So let's start right at the beginning. What is the internet? That is a big, big question. The internet, as we know it, is the exchange of data across a an entire global field. When you talk about your phone, tablet, uh, TV, NAS camera, whatever, connecting to the internet, you are exchanging packets of data with other online servers via a system of gateways between you and them, with data being exchanged each way. There's a lot more to it than that, and that is a caveman way of putting it, but that's ultimately what it is. However, when you are using any one of these devices to connect to the internet, your first port of call is not going to be a direct connection to the internet. To connect to the internet, you need a default gateway. The default gateway serves as the means of a doorway between you and the internet, and that is generally housed inside a device, either a router or a modem. Typically, a modem is found within a router. They are one and the same, but a router is a far more advanced version of a modem. So if we connect those two up, in your home or office environment, you more than likely have a router, which is a, a wireless access device, or a modem, which is typically a single port, non-wireless activated device, and this is what all of your devices are communicating with. These will typically, in its lowest form, be communicating with the router or the modem. But the ways in which these devices communicate with your router or modem, and therefore the internet, do differ depending on your home or office environment. And this is where all of these terms live. Now, the oldest one of all of these is a hub. A hub serves as kind of a repeater, if you will. And what it does, it's connected to the router or the modem, and it simply repeats the signal that it's received to multiple directions. It doesn't have the brains or intelligence of a switch, and it certainly can't handle packets of data like a switch that we'll talk about later on. But these days, hubs are largely obsolete due to the fact that modems, routers and switches have become so advanced. So chances are that you connect to this device either directly to the router or modem with a system of firewalls and security that we'll save for the next video, or you use one of these three other methods. So the first one is a power line adapter. And a power line adapter serves as a means of connecting to a router from another part of the house without directly connecting to it point to point, wirelessly or with a cable. For example, in this house here, we have a router down here at the bottom. 
but in the attic space we have a PC that needs to connect to that router but it's too far away the cable will be too long to reach that box or even wirelessly there's too many layers and walls and more separating that computer with this router however a power line adapter takes advantage of the mains power connections inside your house that live in the walls on a single circuit and allows you to connect a single power line adapter into a plug point connecting this plug point directly into the router and then at the other end of the house have another one of these that connects to the computer thereby using the mains power cables in your home to connect this computer to this router using two of these and a couple of LAN cables. Now, chuck that to the one side. That is a power line adapter. But this won't be the only way you connect to your router or modem. You can use a wireless access point. And a wireless access point is not dissimilar to that of a power line adapter. However, a wireless access point connects to your router or your modem and it creates a Wi-Fi hotspot. And this Wi-Fi hotspot is then accessible via all of your wireless assorted devices. A wireless access point these days, although serviceable to turn a non-wireless router or modem into a wireless network interface, is still not the most efficient and these days in order to get the very best wireless access we strongly recommend two things one obviously getting a wireless router but if you don't have access to a wireless router then we recommend using a mesh device now a mesh device is a device that connects to your router system and creates a sub network of nodes. These nodes communicate with one another and will allow your device when traveling through your house to jump between these mesh points, allowing you to always have wireless connectivity. Although when connecting your mesh with your router, you have to make sure your router is mesh enabled and compatible with the mesh router in question. So in the case of this Synology mesh router, the MR2200AC, it needs to be connected to a Synology mesh, uh, a Synology router known as the RT2600AC or another MR2200AC. Now using our diagram as before, we can see that with a wireless mesh, what we have is the router and then these mesh points dotted around our home or office environment. These create large areas of coverage that cover one another and allow your device when traveling through your house to maintain internet connectivity wirelessly no matter where you are in the house, also including your original connection. Now mesh routers can also be utilized with power line adapters to create separate mesh wireless networks in a home or office environment. But once again, it is recommended that you get a mesh that is compatible with a router and that the router can sync up with that mesh system for that large area of coverage. Now, so far we've talked about mostly devices that we find in the home or very low end business. Once you start taking networking seriously or have more than around th three or four devices, it is heartily recommended that you get a switch. Now, a switch is a means of creating a network environment for all of the devices that you have around to all share the same network and therefore not only exchange data between them, but also have access to the internet in a far safer and more secure fashion. When a switch is connected to a modem or to a router, the result is this switch can connect to many, many more devices 
simultaneously all at once with all of these devices exchanging data with each other. Although this graphic shows all of these devices connected to the switch, a more likely diagram would be each of these devices in a circle with each of these devices exchanging data in either direction at any given time. With the correct security protocol, you can ensure that these devices can communicate data, can exchange any kind of sized packet data via a gigabit switch, or bigger when you've got larger switch interfaces for 10 GBE and higher. And the result is that with a switch creating a network environment for all of your devices, you have a far more controlled environment where certain devices that are of importance end up having priority of service. You can ensure that security protocol, network attached storage backups, IP cameras that protect your home or office environment, or mission critical or business PC and laptops have priority in that network environment. You can even make sure that internet connectivity from these devices through a switch is controlled and you can make sure that a mobile phone has limited connectivity whereas a tv that may need larger file formats is allowed much bigger transit of data and that's the main difference between a network and the internet because a network of devices much like this one is designed to work internally when you say that the tv can't connect to the internet chances are it can be one of two problems one it has fallen off of the network or two your internet service provider or isp has had difficulty with your network uh, your internet connection but it's worth highlighting that if you are going to take advantage of a network attached storage device or any of these network appliances you do not need the internet in order for these devices to communicate. You can use a router that will have multiple LAN ports on the rear. However, it's worth highlighting, a router generally has fewer LAN ports than a network switch, because a network switch is designed to have many, many more ports overall. And that's really the main difference between all of these devices. Some of them are for the home. Some of them are for business, but all of them can be utilized by you in your network environment and will ensure that you have a very safe environment and one that is completely accessible, but not allowing you to have your data stolen or your computer devices intruded into. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this useful. I know this looks like the scrawlings of a madman there at the end, but I encourage you to check out how this looked at the beginning to see more. I will be doing a breakdown of different terminology within the field of networking devices covering everything from the L123 security protocol to dynamic IPs, static IPs and more. So do stay tuned for that video. If you have found it useful, then do let me know in the comments. Do click like if you enjoyed it, click subscribe to learn more. Visit the links in the description to support this channel and I will see you next time.